Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Tuesday, February 12th, 2019. In this video, uh, we're going to do what I call fun with fibs. We're going to take a look at the uh, stock market, where we're at so far uh, this year, really off the lows. I uh, want to do a comparison of the top, uh, or the first leg down, I should say, that came in the last bear market. So what I'm doing here is going over the assumption right now, which is still yet to be determined, but that's my my primary assumption uh, based on a, a lot of what I've covered recently. Most of my uh, or a good deal of my longest term indicators rolling over in the last couple of months to uh, sell signals to bearish. Um, there's still some that haven't rolled over, so I can't say with the highest degree of confidence whether this is a uh, simply a bear market rally or uh, the, the drop in the last quarter or fourth quarter uh, was just a, a great buying opportunity on the road to new highs. Now, undoubtedly, it was a great buying opportunity. You know, the rally was priced in. We saw that coming. Now it's already it's gotten to about the upper end of, of where my expectation is that it would go. Um, it's been um, pretty resilient. And a lot of that has to do with the fact we had a, a much sharper leg down, the final leg down overshot. So it was a little bit different. And I want to make that uh, and just say that, and I've said this before, be careful about comparisons, especially if you're going to try to trade on those when you're comparing uh, different periods in the market. In other words, the top and uh, 2007 and the initial leg down. No two bull and bear markets are exactly alike. However, there are similarities, and that's what technical analysis is all about, looking at uh, past uh, you know, price action and chart patterns and uh, things such as Elliott wave counts and all that that, that do tend to repeat, uh, but again, just not exactly the same. So we're going to do a comparison here. And I would say this, if you're not familiar with Fibonacci uh, retracement levels and Fibonacci projections and other Fib tools, um, it, Fibonacci's are just amazing. If you read up on you know, the Fibonacci sequence and, and how, not just in trading, it works well in the financial markets uh, to help you predict where, where prices may reverse or you know, to, to help align with other, your other analysis. I always say this, there's not any single TA tool, technical analysis tool, that is the be all end all. Everything should be used in conjunction with other tools to mm -hmm. confirm or refute your analysis. Uh, and I think FIBs are an important uh, part of that. Um, but you'll find Fibonacci ratios and sequences and, and other um, uh, things that uh, it's uncanny when you really read about it and study those in the natural world from the shell of a nautilus to you know the structure of the veins in a leaf to parts of the human body uh, to you know astronomy and, and, and identifying where planets should be, things like that. It's just a really, really incredible thing. This is on stockcharts.com, by the way. We're going to be looking at some... Uh, some of the charts from stock charts, but in their uh, chart school, they do have this section on Fibonacci uh, uh, time zones. Well, this is on Fib time zones. You can check on retracement levels and everything else, but they talk about the, the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio. Really uh, geeky, but cool stuff. Let's just leave it at that. Okay, so going forward, we'll be toggling between the charts uh, that leading up. This was the market top back here in 2007. Uh, similar to now, we bought we, back then we peaked in uh, October. And uh, so what you have basically that, uh, you know, the great bear market, the great recession and that 55% bear market we had was made up uh, like most primary trends. Um, if you're an Elliott waiver, you can count the waves. There was wave one down, a primary trend, wave two up the all-dreaded or all-powerful wave three, which is the strongest of the waves, and wave four, and then wave five. The NASDAQ um, and QQQ and the NASDAQ 100, they bottomed, that index bottomed in uh, November, actually, whereas every other index, the Dow, uh, S&P 500, the Russell 2000 small cap index, mid caps, they all bottomed in March 09. Uh, so just a little side note here. But so what we're going to focus on right now is we're going to play the where are we at game. And again, uh, there's nothing definitive. Only time will tell for sure. Um, but I think there's enough evidence pointing towards this being uh, us being in the tail end of a bull market rally that it's worth talking about here, especially at this point in time, because we've reached that point. Uh, if you recall, I've shared uh, some charts recently that uh, it's called the stages of a various stages of a uh, bull or bear market. And it shows after the top is in, uh, you always get a kickback rally. And that's since you have the first leg down, 
Um, most uh, of those that are, are, are bullish longer term and believe the market's going to new highs say, Ooh, that was a close call, that drop was ugly, but it was a great buying opportunity, and they start loading the boat for the ride to new highs. And it's only at the point where uh, the masses believe that they dodged a bullet. That's where you call the, that's what they call the, um, uh, the well, the initial leg up. And then you get really the, the true point of recognition, of course, will be at wave three or if, if and when we take out those lows. Uh, so anyways, that's that's about where we are. And I'll say this, too, from this is about the upper end of the projections that I've had. You know, this rally was clearly priced into the charts. I talked about it from both a technical and a fundamental reason why the market would snap back and, and how powerful, just how powerful a, uh, you know, a, a snapback rally or a bear market rally can be. And uh, I will say this, it, it, it's a little bit surprised me that we've reached this level without much of a, uh, a pullback in between. Uh, we had a little one early off the lows, but again, uh, bottom line is we've gotten to pretty much the upper end where I expected this to take us if it is a bear market rally. Um, you know, not to the exact button, but right around there. Talked about the, uh, you know, the typical retracement of a counter trend move being between the 38.2, at least 38.2 percent Fibonacci retracement level, all the way up to the 61.8, and that's uh, about where we are right now. I'll get to those charts in a second. So let's start with that. <coughs> Excuse me, and point out that back then in the rally that uh, terminated in May. Uh, we just barely popped above the 61.8, but you can see the 61.8% Fib retracement uh, did a very good job of containing uh, that kickback rally. There are two other things I want to point out on this chart uh, before we jump over to uh, the current charts, uh, is, and that is the 200-day EMA. Here I have it as the red line. Now, I put a heavy weighting on the 200-day. I know a lot of traders do. They talk about that. It's a very key, well-watched moving average. And when we had the initial leg down, and again, we're looking here at 2007, don't forget that, but I'm comparing this to now because I pointed that out at the time. We popped, uh, oh, here it was, we popped above it. Uh, actually, it was the S&P, we, we popped above it. This is the QQQ right here. But uh, right now where we're at, uh, just like back then, we're above it. And so what happens is I think this charges up a lot of uh, longs. A lot of those who are longer term bullish on the market saying, OK, we're back above the 200. It's safe to get back in the water. We're not. This isn't a bear market or we'd be under that. Uh, I can tell you this. This is more than common and to be expected that you will overshoot a key moving average like that on the way up. And you overshot it again here. So keep that in mind. The fact that we're above it, we're only above it right now by a relatively small margin and we've only been above it for a little while. So again, I'm going to jump over to the current charts. And before I do, there's one other thing on this chart I want to point out, and that's just the uh, the time, really, since the top back then. So uh, what I'm going to do is put the crosshairs here. Uh, that's showing October 31st. I believe the S&P peaked uh, a little bit earlier in October, but either way, we're grabbing it. And it's showing you, if you look to the white pop-up box in the upper left-hand corner, that says 149 periods. So I'm using a daily chart. So what that is, there were 149 candlesticks. So not 149 days since the top, because there's only five trading days in a week. But it gives you a, a, rough, a rough idea where it is. And you can see that went to actually, well, you can call it there about equal high. So we went to about May. Uh, yeah, that other one was about an equal high. So either way, we can stop it here, about 137 uh, candles into uh, about mid-May. All right, now let's take a look at uh, where we're at today. Go to QQQ, and so you can see that QQQ, hopefully you can make this out in the video. I'll zoom in a little bit. Uh, what I've done on all the charts we're going to go through, and we're just going to look at the handful, the big FANG stocks, uh, Facebook, Amazon, Alphabet, Google, uh, or I should say um, uh, Amazon, Alphabet, Microsoft, and the likes. And so we had uh, pretty much a double top in QQQ, so that's where these FIBs start. And uh, you can see a similar thing. We had our initial leg down, just like back then, a little consolidation, the final leg down uh, of what at this point in time I'm still viewing as most likely the first wave down in a bear market with much more to come. Again, only time will tell. We all have our opinions on where things are going to go, uh, and we're all going to be right at times and wrong at others. So uh, right now we have uh, 618. You can see it here. You can see the dotted line. And... <clears throat> Just like back then, 
it's almost uncanny. We've had just two slight pops above it, but for all intents and purposes, I mean, that's very close. This isn't random. As I go through these charts, I'm going to show you the alphabet, uh, uh, the, the fibs on alphabet, Microsoft, Apple, all those, and you will see that there's, uh, I think there's too many charts here to say this is complete randomness that these stocks are reacting off these levels. This is also price resistance. I've done a few videos uh, in the last couple of days. Those were members only because we covered trade ideas and some other opportunities out there. Um, but uh, and, and I mentioned about 171 is a pretty significant resistance level on uh, QQQ. It was really this topping pattern type here that was broken and then tested from below, being tested from below again. So we have 171 price resistance, and again, we're focusing on the Fibonacci retracements here. And so far, that's where the Qs have stopped. They stopped there last week, and they're there again today. So let's see what happens. I will say this. If the market can punch on through here in the coming days or weeks and clearly put that level in the rearview mirror, I, I, I will say it's not a be-all, end-all, um, but it definitely gives a check mark because we're hitting that upper upper end uh, uh, the bounce target range and to keep the the bearish case uh, intact uh, you want to see of course this uptrend line go uh, but you don't want to see us get a lot higher than this it'd be ideal to turn down here at that fib just like we did back in 2008 on the initial kickback rally um, and, uh, and see a lot of these other stocks stay within that level plus its price resistance as well and you can see like I mentioned back then uh, the fact that we're above the uh, the 200 day, tried to box that in, uh, not a big deal. That is to be expected. That happened in previous bear markets, and um, again, it's we have a momentum fueled overshoot. There's a lot of momentum leading to the upside. You need that uh, excessive bullishness at the highs to pave the way if we are going to get a big flush down. This is important. This is short clearing stuff, clearing all out a lot of short interest. It's sucking in. Uh, a lot of, uh, uh, we'll call them weekended longs, uh, individual investors, maybe institution, who knows? Let's not overanalyze it. Let's just uh, let's, let's look at the charts right now. Uh, oh, days, uh, what were we at? About 130-something periods before. And if we look from the top right now, actually, here's the top. So let's use this one. Uh, we have, you can see the pop-up box to the left. Uh, tells me that that is a 112 bars. I'm looking at the uh, towards the bottom in the white letters um, where it says under QQQ and then the date says 5.5 months, 112 bars. Uh, so this this bounce back rally uh, after the initial leg down has has taken us back to the 61.8 retracement a little bit faster. And that makes sense because we had a, a, a near vertical plunge. We had a capitulation, sharp move down, a little sharper than what we saw back then. Therefore, we got a V recovery. And again, all that's done is taken us right back to the uh, 61.8, just a little bit quicker than it did back then. Uh, but pretty much so far, this is playing out a lot like then. And again, it's the long-term charts, which we're not even going to get into here, that help formulate the, uh, you know, that uh, longer-term bias. Also watching this PPO, this is a momentum indicator showing us the momentum is waning. I covered this in the, in the recent videos for members as well, but I wanted to point that out because uh, I'll keep this one public um, on the uh, YouTube channel and on the front page or right side of the chart. Okay, Microsoft then. This is 2007. Remember when I jumped back to these... Uh, uh, brown colored charts. We're looking at uh, the top in 2007, which were Microsoft came in late October, early November. So you can see the, the dates down here. Uh, and uh, came back to make a, a perfect, a, literally a perfect 50% retracement. You can see right there on the button. Uh, and that was it. So again, I'm, I'm comparing apples to apple here. This is apples to apples. This is that initial kickback rally that meshed with the markets and everything else. And so 50% retracement. And uh, just like today, a lot of the stocks in the market have popped above that 200, charging up a lot of bulls, sucking in some more money, blowing out some more shorts, which is what you need if you are going to get this. These kind of moves don't come easy. You need to clear a lot of short interest. You need to shift a lot of... Uh, you know, market sentiment and all that, get everybody loaded on one side of the boat so the boat then tips and, and goes the other direction. So uh, Microsoft back then, 50% retracement. And uh, as of today, 
and this is very important, I'm not looking for identical retracements on each stock. What I'm doing here is just looking at the market leading stocks that make up the bulk of the returns in both the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 and looking at the leaders and seeing where they're at. And again, I think it's uh, uncanny uh, how well these fibs work. So here's Microsoft off the highs. This time around it topped in uh, October 3rd. That's the candle, 61.8 to the button. So back then it retraced 50%. Uh, percent. This time, perfect. Two tags of that 61.8% re fib retracement, and we're still below it. Again, doesn't mean we can't go above it. And if we do, if we do, um, it's not the BL end. I'll get to some stocks like Apple. Some of these, sometimes they'll hit a 70 point, uh, 78 or so. There's a next fib is at 78.6%. Um, but right now, let's just look at what and take things for what they are. So far, we have a rally that was impulsive and has failed on multiple attempts and remains below that uh, 61.8 fib. All right, that's Microsoft. Next up. Let's look at the former darling of Wall Street, uh, Apple. Uh, Apple peaked here back in late, uh, rallied all the way up to December uh, 08 before giving up the ghost. Uh, had a powerful leg down, a lot like this this one that we've just had. A pretty sharp correction off the highs because uh, it was a holdout. It waited. It held out. There's your, I'm not going to go all through these charts. The same things I always point out, but so many similarities to now as back then, divergent highs, everything else. Um, so Microsoft, what did it do? Well, stockcharts.com, which we're looking at here on the brown charts, does not have the ability to add the 78.6% Fibonacci retracement level, which is a key Fib level. Uh, but I can tell you from doing this long enough that that's going to be darn close to it right there. So it it was the strongest retracer. Um, you know, but it still fell shy of its highs. And again, uh, that's all she wrote from there. So that's Apple back then. Uh, we'll call it a 78.6 retracement. And today we can see Apple also had a, a strong drop, a uh, very strong initial leg down like before, um, but it's been weak. You can take that how you want it. Um, but this was formerly the world's largest company shortly, right up to that point, actually. And it quickly, you know, dropped down to number three and has not even made a full 38.2% retracement so far in this rally. So uh, take it for what it's worth. And you can see so far it's stopped a little shy of that level and hasn't kissed it yet. Uh, next up, let's look at Amazon. Okay, this is Amazon back then, 2008. Here was your high. In October, Amazon was a tough little sucker. It had that initial leg down, and it didn't roll over until uh, later in 2008. Uh, very resilient, um, but it came up. You can see popped just above that 61.8. Came at it, tested the 61.8 again, and that's all she wrote for Amazon. That was then. This is now. Amazon topped uh, back here a little earlier than everything else in September. Really a double top, like a lot of other things uh, back in October. And uh, so far, you can see since the low, since the bottom there, uh, it's come up. Really, this one split the difference so far. So this one hasn't stopped cold. It did have a lot of reactions here around the 50% fib, popped a little bit above it, but still still shy of that 61.8% retracement. And again, the point being that all of these are within that level of the normal typical kickback range, I should say right here, because this was a bottom of a uh, retracement um, or counter trend move to a larger leg down, if that's what. Okay, next up, Alphabet. Uh, there's the top back in, uh, looks like early November. Uh, initial leg down to right here. Kick back to that 50%. Pop just briefly above the 50% uh, by a small margin and uh, came at it, tried it again several times at that level. You know, we had a lot of momentum run, running up to that uh, fib retracement there, but you can see that did the trick. And then uh, again, that's all she wrote for Amazon. Or, I mean, I'm sorry, Alphabet. And here's Alphabet today, uh, same share class, Class A. Uh, in some of these charts, I've put up FIB clusters. So what I've done here is taken a look at both the highs and the uh, the initial, if you have, a, especially in this case, you had two reaction highs at the same level, very significant reaction highs. So I drew FIBs from that level down, and that gives you these FIB clusters. So you can see right now, uh, Amazon so far has stopped, I'm sorry, keep Getting out. This is Alphabet. Uh, has stopped cold at that 61.8 fib from this retracement, and really at the bottom of that fib cluster right there. And Facebook wasn't around back then, 
Uh, so uh, we'll look at today, and you can see just a beautiful, beautiful retracement, 50% retracement. Here's the 50% retracement level, and you can see if we zoom in here, uh, this one just continues to fail at the at that 50% fib retracement. Also setting itself up, I uh, mentioned recently, that might have been uh, for members, uh, for a potential island cluster topping pattern. You want to watch, I'll be on watch for a, a gap down in the coming days, and that would leave an island here. Uh, nice uh, potential reversal pattern that comes after a, a pretty decent uptrend like this. And then finally, the N in FANG, if you're going on the F-A-N-G's. I like the F-A-A-M-G. That's my acronym, FANG. A uh, little harder to say, but uh, the N in FANG is Netflix, and you have a high right here back in uh, 2008. There was another beloved stock that continued to uh, march on as uh, everything else uh, started to fall. Uh, but finally, the technical, it, you know, it's, it fell, you know, victim to the selling, the technicals, everything else, and had this initial leg down. So it looked something like this. That was the first leg down in the bear market for uh, Netflix with a kickback rally to the 50% uh, fib. You can see it right there, almost a perfect, a little bit popped, just intraday a little bit above it, and that was it. Never looked back from there. Okay, fast forward, uh, you know, a decade or more, and you can see Netflix has now retraced. It put a high back here all the way back in June and has been moving lower since and has rallied up to a nice FIB cluster. FIB cluster, again, when you have two Fibonacci levels off key. So I have the, the highs right here, the top, and then this, this major kickback rally, the major reaction high, and you can see they overlap almost perfectly. You have the, uh, what is that, the 61.8. I really have to zoom in there. Yeah, the 61.8 and 78.6 retracement levels uh, so far capping the advance here on uh, Netflix. All right, so that's it. We'll wrap it up here. And again, the takeaway from this, uh, the 200s have been popped, you know, the 200 days, um, which is exactly what happened back then. They were popped for by a fair margin, and we traded above them for weeks. And uh, then the next leg down came. But more importantly is how much, um, in percentage terms, we've retraced. And right now, uh, again, it's still anybody's market. We can certainly power on up here. And like I said, if we continue to power much above those levels, sure, there are going to be other resistance levels and other Fibonacci retracements, but it just doesn't, it just doesn't mesh that well um, with a, uh, uh, a long-term bearish. If we take out, you know, for example, Netflix, I'm just saying that's that you can see an uppermost level, there's a Fib there, or that's the full retracement. Um, but we're going to wrap it up here. We just had the closing bell in the market. I want to get this video out to you guys. And, I'll, you know, we'll update this. If in three, four, you know, eight weeks, a month, three months from now, we're doing this video and all these fibs are taken out, uh, so be it. And I can tell you we'll probably have some of my long-term trend indicators flip back to bullish. And um, as of now, they're bearish. But we have to see on those monthly charts you need to wait to see how the month closes in February, and it's only February 12th, so we've got uh, you know, a couple more weeks left in this month uh, before we can really take away anything from the uh, monthly indicators. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. I hope you enjoyed it.